Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, we're going to continue our look at how you can interact with the Pathfinder. In the last video, uh, we saw how you can uh, issue a path request and get the result back. And that's basically where we are now in the scene. Um, just to remind you, we basically had this button. I can click the button and I would get a request sent and I would get the result back. And it would just debug log that to my console. So. Building on top of that, um, this is the class created in the last video. Um, we have all this plumbing up here that we need to get things started and to request the path. We don't need that for this example. What we do need is this um, consume path, which is consume path result, which is the method that will be called from the pathfinder when a result is ready. And obviously, we want to do something more useful than just debug logging it. Now one thing to um, be aware of is that if the Pathfinder runs in a separate thread, uh, multi-threading has been um, turned on, which is the default, then this callback will happen on that other thread. So if you try to manipulate stuff in here and, and call uh, Unity methods um, in here, you will get an error since you are not on the main thread. So if you use multi-threading, which is um, recommended, then you need to basically get back onto the main thread because before you start processing the result, or at least before you start um, calling any Unity methods. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, obviously, if you don't use multi-threading, you can just do whatever you want right here in this method. Um, I have just created a bit of code here to show you how we can do this. So. Right now, as you can see, we've just reduced this to a rather simple um, functionality. I just record the latest result that has been returned from the Pathfinder in a private variable. And then I've created a separate method that will process this last result. And as you can see, I simply check if one is there. Um, and if not, uh, or if <laughs> one is there, I will then just briefly get it into a local variable so I can uh, continue processing if another path comes back from the pathfinder we don't want to have uh, issues with um, uh, multi-threading issues with uh, using the same variable on different threads actually I can see I just forgot a small thing here because obviously once we have recorded that we are processing the latest result we want to set that to null so that it can be um, set again now you may want to synchronize this, uh, put a lock around these two statements so that you're absolutely sure that the threads will not um, make trouble for each other. Right now we're just going to keep it simple like this. So uh, the next thing uh, in line would be to actually check the status of the result you get back. It has a number of different uh, statuses that you may get back. What you would like to see probably is complete. Um, this means that the Pathfinder has been successful in finding a path and that the result will also contain this path. For all the rest of uh, the statuses, this has to do with something that didn't go quite as it should. Um, so the path will not be there and you will need to handle um, these different situations. If you wish, or otherwise you can just ignore them and only react to complete messages. It's totally up to you. So as you can see in this case, we are just going to say if it's complete, I'm going to just wait a second, for do something else, and then for all the other values, I will handle that, and then I'll return from this function. So down here, this will only happen if we actually have a complete result. And again, what I do is I then t get a hold of the path part of my result. Um, the path is a stack uh, with all the different uh, path nodes along the path on it, starting uh, from the top of the stack with the node nearest to the unit and then all the way to the end destination. And you can iterate over this in any number of ways. Now the most memory efficient way to do it is this, where you don't allocate anything for uh, an enumerator. So just go through it uh, like this and call either peak front to look at this um, path from the front. Or you can also use some of the other um, methods like peak back, so you can look from the back to the front and, and so forth. 
And then you can do whatever you want with the path, reduce it, um, do something, mark some path notes with uh, some visuals or wh however, you, uh, what, whatever you need, um, or inspect each of the nodes. I mean, these most of the nodes on a path are actually cells of the grid, with the exception of the first and the last, which are the actual positions um, that the unit will navigate to. It is not the center of a grid. But apart from that, all of the others are actual actual grid cells, so you can actually cast them to grid cells and then get information on them if you need that for your AI. Now, we have this method, and of course we need to call it from somewhere. And you have a number of options. Um, as you can see here, I've just implemented it in the update method, so it will just basically constantly do this check. Um, this may not be the smartest because you probably don't want to or you don't need to do this check constantly. Uh, it will probably only happen uh, occasionally that you will get back a path result. So you might want to do this maybe in a coroutine to do it at an interval. Or even better, if you want full control of the interval and, and when things happen, you could do this as a task on the load balancer. Um, how to do that, how to do uh, tasks on a load balancer is uh, covered in another video, um, but it's a fairly easy thing to do and it will give you more control. But of course you can also just use the update method. Yeah. So this will, should give you an idea how to actually consume the result uh, and use it for something useful.